Hello friends, this is Eli from Mystic Circuits. Today I have another episode in our demo series on using Anna to its fullest potential, with this episode focusing on using Anna to process note sequences. You'll notice in this video that all of our modules use our lovely new purple PCB panels. We phased out the metal panels and we'll be using this style going forward. As many of you know, I love purple, and this really feels like the culmination of our artistic style. Unlike normal logic processors, Anna works with variable voltages, allowing us to do all sorts of fun nonlinear transformations with the twist of a knob. When it comes to node sequences, Anna is capable of a lot of handy tricks. It can either process a single sequence, combine multiple sequences, or provide multiple outputs simultaneously for polyphonic note transformations. Let's learn a bit about what Anna can do to spice up your melodies. As you might already know, Anna has six outputs, which represent the six wave shapers contained in the module. Each processor has its own flavor, so we will begin by going through each output individually. This patch is using an eight-step sequence coming from our tree module, along with an upcoming voltage sequencing expander for it called Leaves. You will note that they all have the lovely purple panels. Don't they look great together? Anyways, the sequence from Leaves is going into the SUM1 input of Anna. This sets up the knobs so that the knob labeled IN1 will transpose the sequence up and down, and the IN2 knob will act as a static voltage for the second input to the processor. Following Anna, we have a Micro Ornaments and Crimes acting as a quantizer, and also a monitor letting us see the note sequence. This module pairs particularly nicely with Anna because its four channels of note quantization make it easy to keep a few of Anna's outputs in tune. Finally, we have a Mutable Instruments Platz, which is our voice. The outputs behave as follows. Min, outputting the minimum of the two inputs. This works great for constructing a bass line that will always be the lowest note. You can also use it to make sure that a note sequence will never go above a certain threshold. Notice that as we turn the in to knob counterclockwise, the higher notes in the sequence are brought lower while the lower notes are unaffected. Max, output the maximum of the two inputs. Being the opposite of min, it is obviously pretty nice for making lead lines. Notice that as we turn the in to knob clockwise, the lower notes are brought up while the higher notes are unaffected. XOR, limit the range of the output. Keep in mind that the XOR output will give a negative voltage when both inputs are positive. This output is labeled VCA on the metal panels. This output tends towards zero volts because if either input is zero volts, then the output will be two. Notice that as we turn the IN2 knob clockwise, the overall range of the voltage sequence is reduced, eliminating both the highest and lowest notes in the sequence and bringing everything towards the middle. As we cross the 12 o'clock point on the IN2 knob and keep going further, the range starts to increase again, but with the voltage sequence inverted. This output gives interesting results mostly when the voltage sequence has both positive and negative voltages, so be sure that your oscillator or quantizer can accept negative voltages. If your sequencer only outputs positive voltages, as is the case with leaves, just bring the IN1 knob counterclockwise a bit to shift the sequencer input into the negative voltage range.
Mag outputs the difference between the two voltage inputs. A nice thing about this output is that it always outputs a positive voltage. So if you have a digital quantizer or oscillator that only responds to positive signals, this is a good output to use. The best way to picture the behavior is that mag gives a large voltage when the two inputs are far away from each other and a small voltage when they are close together. Unlike the other outputs, mag will change its value whenever either input changes its value, and therefore is also the busiest of the outputs. Step. Step will algorithmically hold notes in your sequence depending on what is going on with the other outputs on ANA. Step is your go-to for pseudo-random sequences with ANA because the track and hold circuit within is designed to make its own decisions about which notes to hold. Keep in mind that the sampling input is always coming from channel 1. Generally things get more interesting when you run a second note or gate sequence into the second channel. Here is an example of step using one input. And now an example of step with a second sequence going into its sum 2 input. This output isn't terribly useful for making note sequences, as it only ever puts out gates, but it is super useful for taking a voltage sequence and automatically generating a gate sequence from it. In fact, if you remember our video on using ANA with gates, you might remember that it is possible to invert the output of Box and get a second gate sequence from it, since Box also outputs a negative gate. Here, I have the mag input sequencing plats with Box and an inverted box sequencing a VPME quad drum off to the side. Changing the knobs just changes where in the sequence the gates will occur. So we mentioned before that ANA is capable of manipulating polyphonic sequences. What exactly does that mean? Well, as you may have noticed, all of our wave shaper outputs are available simultaneously from ANA. So if we plug each one into a polyphonic voice, each output will have a different behavior that is all correlated with what is happening at the inputs. A really lovely companion to ANA for these purposes is the Qubit Chord V2, since it has a mode where four of its inputs just act as volt per octave inputs, and all four voices are perfectly in tune. It also has an internal quantizer, so you don't even need a separate quad quantizer. However, the volt per octave inputs only react to positive voltages, so keep that in mind. Here, I have all of the inputs plugged into the cord, except for the max and box outputs, with nothing plugged into ANA, and cord set to quantize everything to a minor scale. Notice that as we turn the knobs, we are basically just selecting different cords depending on the settings. You can think of this as an almost two-dimensional map of cords that you are scanning through with the two knobs, including lots of weird cords that one might not intentionally choose, but which are pleasing nonetheless.
Now, let's put in that sequence from leaves again. As you can see, we are using a single monophonic voltage sequence to drive an entire polyphonic voice. Playing with the knobs, you see that we change how the sequence selects chords depending on the knob positions. Now, here comes the fun part. We are going to upgrade this patch a bit by running a second voltage sequence from a second tree leaves combo into the second channel of Anna. The second tree is running at a different subdivision from the first one so that the two sequences are cycling in and out of phase with each other, but in tempo sync. As before, changing the knobs on Anna will change how chords are selected by the sequences, but now the behavior of the chords will be influenced by both sequences. Finally, here is the same patch but with the min output now controlling a baseline coming from plats, while the max output is going back into chord. The positive box output is triggering an envelope controlling the level of qubit chord, while the negative gate from box is triggering the internal envelope of plats. Both of these gates are also triggering drums on the quad drum. I'm controlling this entire patch literally just by changing the knobs on Anna. As you can see, Anna is a powerhouse for nonlinear manipulation of note sequences. From fairly vanilla processing of a single voltage sequence to complex combination of multiple sequences, and even expanding one sequence into multiple outputs, Anna does it all. If you are looking for a way to add a bit of controllable unpredictability to spice up your patches, look no further than Anna from Mystic Circuits.